Now, we put out a challenge um, on Instagram yesterday, and it was to comp a property in Cincinnati. I randomly picked a property. It was nothing. I literally just went, you know what? Where where don't we talk about? Uh, Cincinnati seemed like the place, and, uh, and we're going to comp it. Here's the property. I put it out there for everybody. Uh, 1421 Teakwood Avenue, Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay. This is not a property that was, uh, from a student. This is not somebody that DM me, helped me comp. This is literally, I pulled this at random. Now we put a challenge out to see who is going to get the closest to my valuation on this. And then I'm going to break down and show what you should offer on a property like this. Cause I think that's the missing link of this whole process. Now, before we get into it, let's go over again, which we've done a few times on here, the seven steps to comping a property. All right, and we're gonna go through each and every one of these steps so that uh, you can really get, get good and have the principles behind um, finding the valuation of these properties. So if you'll pop that up, there we are. Steps to comping, location. First, you start neighborhood, then half mile, then one mile. Take a picture of this, guys, if you've never seen it. Number two is timeline. When did those comparables sell? Three months, within three months is the best. Six months is if you have to, and one year if you have to extend out, if you have to time travel. Uh, the age of the property is plus or minus 15 years. I would start that in like 1950. If it's below 1950, um, you could probably pretty much all clump them together. There's some historic properties that you probably want to only comp, uh, comp with historic properties. But for the most part, in a lot of areas, there's kind of a hodgepodge. There's kind of a mixture of different times that these properties were built. All right. So, um, but if it's above 1950, which uh, a lot of these properties are plus or minus 15 years, that's what appraisers are looking at when they're doing their valuations. Okay. Size plus or minus 15%. That's your bread and butter. That's where you want to live. Okay. Whenever an appraiser is doing evaluation, and, and the reason I bring up an appraiser is not because of the deals we do. We go in with a cash offer. Appraiser doesn't even fix, uh, uh, figure into the mix here right but at some point these properties are going to be owned by somebody that's going to live in there or they're going to get conventional financing as a um a portfolio property as an investor and so they get appraisals right so this is what the appraisal standards are are uh, that they go through okay floor plan this is critical and this is the one that screws everybody up because floor plans matter there is a big difference between a 1900 floor plan and a 2000 floor plan. Can we all agree on that? Let's all like shake our head. I can't see you, but I can imagine everybody's shaking their head, right? Floor plans matter. And some people love the charm of a historic house. I do. Some people love the charm of a box house where it's just like a storage, you know, like a, a one of those storage container houses or something. You know what I mean? It's all different. So you got to make sure that you're finding similar floor plans. All right, similar floor plans. And the easiest way to do that is one story houses or with one story houses, two story, two story, multifamily with multifamily condo towns, you get it, okay? Condition, how much will it take to renovate that property and potential, potential. This is the, this is the toughest one. Um, and this is why we build up our cash buyer database. And this is why we connect with a lot of different investors with a lot of different strategies is because some person can look at that. I could look at a deal and I see that it's worth 300,000, but Raphael could look at that deal and know that he can add a guest house onto that or do something creative, um, and, and get, you know, 400 for that, uh, property, same property. So it, it, it matters to understand that you will get that. That'll be the last piece. That's the hardest one to work on. All right, here we go. We're going to get into this. First thing I like to do, I mean, obviously we're going to get into the details here, but remember the first thing I like to do is get into the picture here. You know, I want to see from an aerial standpoint, where's the location? Now this is great. It's not on a major street. I don't see a railroad behind the house. I don't see a highway. It's kind of a traditional right in the middle of the neighborhood. All right. The first, the, the next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at what's the vibe of this house. What's going on? Does this thing have some wear and tear? Is it a property that uh, needs a lot of love? Is the landscaping getting taken care of, or is it pretty rough? This to me looks like somebody has a lot of pride in this house, a lot of love. Look, 
look. The the landscaping is done. Now nah, the stump could get removed, but that takes a while. The roof looks a little bit older. Okay, so I know because I have PropStream here that this. And by the way, you can use PropStream. You can use Batch Leads, um, whatever you prefer. Uh, just make sure you use the coupon code TTP so that you can get in there or go to ttpdata.com. But this right here, owner status, non-owner occupied. So what does that tell us about this property? Is there more or less emotions attached to this property than if they owned it and lived in it? Less, typically, usually. 99.999% of the time, a rental property will have less. Now let's look at this. I got four beds, one bath. I got 1,400 square feet. It's 9,100 square feet. Now going back to this, we're looking at it and I wanna see, is this is this one story, is this two story? What's going on here, right? And it has it in the data there, but I just wanna make sure I wanna verify, right? I see one story is maybe a little two story here, right? It just depends. This is a four bed, two bath. So it could be a two story going in here. Boom. We got we got a two story. We got some we got some livable space up here. All right. So now we got to compare that with other two stories. Okay. Now we're going we're going comparable. Beautiful. Look at this, by the way. It's a vacant property for 15 years. If you live in Cincinnati or you do virtual wholesaling, perhaps you should talk to this property owner. Okay, here we go. Comparables. Oh God, I love this. It makes it so easy. Okay, so I'm gonna do this two ways, guys. I'm gonna use PropStream and then I'm gonna do this for a free resource, which is looking at Zillow, Redfin, and uh, Realtor.com, taking those three values, dividing by three and coming up and we'll see how close we get. But look at this, look at this. Okay, number one here, you've got a property that sold uh, about six months ago for 155, 1400 square feet, four bed, one and a half, 1300, 7900 square feet. Are you kidding me? We're right in the ballpark here. What do you think, Raf? Mm, yeah. 1500. I mean, it's right there. We're looking good. Okay. But then you've got number three here, which is right, right by the park or the school here. And this one went for 138, but it's a 3 2. It's a bigger house. 138, 32, uh, 1,500 square feet. And what I want to do here is I want to look and see what's going on here. Why did this one sell for 138? Basic, 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 basic. Uh, okay. I mean, this is just a, it, it's, it, it's a livable house, but it's a very basic house. Very outdated. Okay. So, uh, but it's very similar, right? And this one for 138, this is saying it's got a valuation of 170, but it's bigger, right? On this one was uh, a, year a year ago. Yeah, so we know that things are popping <clears> off. <throat> but look at some of these other ones here. You've got a 220, you got a 229. Where is number five here? Is it in the same area? Where are we? Where's number five? There it is. It's right there though. We're right here. So what's going? What's going on with this 299, right? Ooh, Check this is looking nice. Look at the difference here. Nice. This is literally double what the other ones went for, right? 1324 square feet, looks nice, right down the street, three bed, two bath. Um, let's look at this yard, fantastic. You see how, like design elements really get you higher value. It's incredible for anybody out there that's going to be flipping in their future. I am telling you one, number one, have a woman designer. I'm just Some saying <laughs> you're going to get more money. Pictures, and two, uh, make sure that you put in some really creative uh, ideas. Uh, does this one have a garage? That one has a garage and ours. Looks like it's in the back there. <laughs> yeah, it looks like there's probably one in the back. So you've got a 299 here and a 155 in the similar. Now, what I'm going to do is because this one's in this neighborhood, let me see one, one last thing here that I'm going to do. 
1927, 1951. So this one's going to have a little bit more of a historic charm to it. Remember I said that 1950 thing? So it's without, it's not in that 15 years. So that makes me want to know, okay, what's going on with this teak wood? Is there any other pictures of this that are online that I can simply Google um, and see what is going on with this property? Okay. So we're going here off market it's still got it at 150 it looks clean but it's kind of like you know it's pretty cookie cutter Let's see if uh zillow has anything on this comp nothing so this is a private sale oh it went 155 in uh on a level yeah we knew that okay good so now we've got a big range here we've got 300 and we've got 155 right yeah. boom zillow has teakwood this one at okay 191 700 boom that's zillow on that incredible so we've got 155 we've got 300 and we've got zillow at 190 right so looking at this, I'm just, I, I want to really understand what's going on in the neighborhood because I want to see if this neighborhood is different than the one that, um, that has the property at 300,000. So look at this neighborhood, 97,000, 94,000, 50, 180. Well, this, this is getting late now. Yeah, but that was, that was 18, right? And it was a huge house. So you've got 97,000 at 1,100 square feet. I'm putting this at a valuation of 200,000. 200,000. Yeah. 200,000. Who's got 200,000? Who's, who's the winner of the comping? Okay. So you've got Zillow here. Let's go back here. You've got Redfin. That has it at 160. I've got it. Interesting. And then you've got, uh, you've got, um, hold on, this thing is just doing that. Realtor.com, there we go. Boom, 160. So uh, I think they're a little bit off. I think 200 cleaned up, looking perfect, is the right price for this property. If you like that video, hit that subscribe button. We come out with new videos every single day. And if you want your questions answered, like you and I, one-on-one, -on -one, make sure that you join us for the live show every single Wednesday. I will see you there.